Rosen uh, <laughs> is here now. How, hi, James. How are you? So, Larry, is the title of your website baldingsuburbanite.com or... <laughs> Balding? Balding, uh -oh. James? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It we starts. We have black chick .com. If you I know. Balding suburbanite. You know, it's amazing, James. <laughs> Considering how short you are, I'm surprised you can see <gasps> the top of my head. Wow. You, know, you know, I blame myself for this. I, really, I do. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Good morning, James. It is always good to have you. Listen, uh, Washington, actually the whole nation was absolutely a, a, a stunned, I think, yesterday by the president's remarks. Uh, let's remind everyone, as he called this press conference about the uh, growing threat of ISIS, he uh, told the world, including our enemy. Uh, but I don't want to put the cart before the horse. We don't have a strategy yet. I think uh, what I've seen in, in some of the... Uh, uh, news reports uh, suggests that uh, folks are getting a little further ahead uh, of where we're at uh, than we currently are. All right, so James, I, I know you've been spending a lot of time at Foggy Bottom, and you're covering the State Department. Uh, is this the right? Uh, you know, I'll just leave, I'll leave this. Let the statement stand on its own. Uh, am I right to be stunned by that? Look, uh, President Obama spoke and, and took questions for 30 minutes in the White House press briefing room yesterday afternoon uh, preceding his National Security Council session. It just strains credulity to imagine that any of the president's national security or top communications advisors were hoping as he strode into the press briefing room that the commander-in-chief would announce, we don't have a strategy yet. That cannot have been the message the administration wanted to emanate from that session with the press, indeed to become its defining headline. We've seen senior U.S. officials in this administration from the White House. Oh, we lost James. All right, well, we will reconnect with James here. But, um, you know, from the State Department's perspective, Crystal, considering that they're, the, the president kept talking about putting together a coalition of other governments to try to uh, effect change here, um, that's going to be the State Department's job. They're going to have a big hand in this. How difficult do you think it is for American diplomats to reach out to other countries and say, hey, join us here, when, and when the president just said, and by the way, we don't really have a strategy? Well, no ally is going to jump on that boat. Right. That's like the, a ti Titanic's going down. But, hey, help. Can you help us? We're sinking. We're a sinking ship. America has been a sinking ship in leadership since this president got elected. And the allies are also going to say, why... Why, why would we join him when he doesn't have a plan yeah. and he doesn't want to lead? J we need a leader. James Rosen is back. And the, the point we were just discussing, James, is uh, y you know, you're covering the State Department. The diplomats there, they're the ones who are going to have to put together this, this coalition that the president suggested they might uh, try to achieve. Uh, how difficult is that with the uh, message that was sent yesterday? Well, it, it complicates things. It reminds us of the difficulties the, the Obama administration imposed on its allies in the Middle East and the Persian Gulf one year ago at this time when the mm -hmm. president had drawn the famous red line uh, about chemical weapons usage by the government in Syria, and then when that occurred, uh, failed to enforce the red line. Um, and there are some who now, as we one year later, <clears throat> see the same president once again contemplating airstrikes in Syria, this time against this jihadist menace known as ISIS. There are some who will draw a direct line between one year ago and today uh, and say that the failure to act at that time perhaps helped put us in the situation that we're in today. These are the kinds of um, things that this administration does that Persian Gulf allies find most vexatious. Well, I think you're absolutely right, James. I mean, th we know that the inaction in Syria over the last, what, three years, even General Dempsey has said ISIS has taken root in Syria, and there's no way to get ISIS, you know, or, for lack of a better word, defeated without going in. To, well, he didn't, gen, you know, General Dempsey stopped sh short, short of saying of, right. going into Syria. But he actually said this is a political, um, this is an economic and diplomatic situation we're dealing with. All three fronts have to be in play here. Now, you have the chair of the Joint Chiefs saying this. And what does the president say? No strategy. It, it, as I say, cannot have been the message that his top advisors hoped that the president would would uh, would make so plain to the American people in this session. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's interesting. A year ago, when the discussion was about airstrikes against uh, the Assad regime mm -hmm. in Syria, Secretary of State Kerry testified before Congress, and he was asked at one point. That, again, this is about a year ago. Uh, whether the jihadist influence in Syria was on the rise or on the wane or what. And he said it was not on the rise. Mm -hmm. And that was the very comment that prompted uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin the next day to call Kerry 
flat out on camera yeah. a liar. Yeah. And we have seen, of course, the growth of this jihadist influence in Syria to the point where now it's it's a direct existential threat in Iraq as J- well. James Rosen, you're, you're walking right into the next question here. Um, you, you mentioned this moment. A red line for us is we start saying a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. That's President Obama drawing that red line in Syria. And, of course, as the uh, red line got crossed and then there was no leadership or no real action there, Vladimir Putin, as you just said, was a big part of that debacle. And now, yesterday, we saw Vladimir Putin's Russian forces side by side, shoulder to shoulder, fighting in Ukraine. Putin and Russia are actually a big part of this Middle East story as well, are they not? Of course, because uh, the Russians have always been supporting the Assad regime in Syria, uh, and they have tried to draw attention to the terrorist threat as well. Uh, it, look, it's a lot of tangled alliances in the yeah. Middle East, and, and, and it's a very difficult minefield to navigate. Uh, but again, it, it, it just is not what I think Americans want to see or what our allies want to see to have the president declare we don't have a strategy. Yeah. And, and, well, you're exactly right. But also, James, you remember in January when uh, the president was, I think it was January, he was asked about the threat of ISIS. He said, oh, they're just a JV yeah, kind of J- basketball JV, yeah. team terrorist. Yeah. So, Again, we <laughs> saw this very, this very JV team overrun Fallujah and Ramadi in right. January. Right. And yet the administration working with the Iraqis was not prepared for them overrunning Mosul in June. And that's mm. where we are more or less today. James, yep. I, I know you've, you've covered these uh, press conferences before, either with the president, secretary of state, various officials. And I know your colleague Ed Henry was covering this one yesterday. Sometimes when the uh, featured speaker, as the president was yesterday, uh, says something like this, which I think many people could interpret as, um, as a gaffe, uh, they've got other people that come take the podium afterwards and try to, or, or at least pull reporters aside and try to walk it back or try to explain mm-hmm. it or put it in new context. Did anyone do that yesterday? Not that I heard. Uh, you have to remember that this, this occurred fairly late, uh, this news conference. It was in the 4 o'clock hour, and at that point, all of the reporters are rushing to make evening deadlines, mm-hmm. um, and I don't think they even would have been very receptive to any background spin at that point. They had, their, they had their sound, they had their content, if you will, and they had to shape it for those deadlines. Um, but, of course, you'll see, um, probably, I would expect, from the administration, uh, some effort to portray the president's remarks as having been taken out of context, um, that, uh, you know, what they re- they're really talking about is a long-term strategy against ISIS, and that's what we have to coordinate with allies and so forth, and it's not really us, it's the allies, we have to get in line and so on. I did talk to a senior State Department official this week who I- made what I thought was a pretty interesting admission to me, and we, we-, we printed it on foxnews.com. I said, look, if it's a long-term strategy to defeat ISIS, does that mean that ISIS and the threat it poses are probably going to extend beyond President Obama's term? And this individual replied to me, probably, probably. Mm -hmm. So we can expect that we're going to be contending with ISIS Mm. uh, longer than we're going to be contending with the spin of the Obama administration official. James Rosen, we're going to have to leave it there. He's with Fox News Channel, part of the really great team coverage that uh, Brett Baer coordinates there every night on Special Report. Thanks for joining us, James. Hey, Crystal and Larry, thank you very much. You bet. We don't have a strategy 